So I'm here with Matthew Uman from uh, Geo in uh, MWC. Uh, Matthew, um, Geo's had a tremendous run. Can you just give us a little update on, on how things are going now? Indeed, I think, um, as you might all know, when we launched in September 2016, uh, there was about 0.2 exabyte of traffic in India. Now India carries more than four exabyte of mobile traffic in one month. And um, as you all also know that uh, we've been an enabler for digital transformation in the consumer segment, i.e. the mobile segment. And very, very soon we will be taking that disruption into the enterprise segment as well as the home portfolio. So incredible growth in, in all dimensions. I guess the question that comes to mind is, you know, kind of what next? How do you handle, uh, you made a lot of customers happy, but their expectations are going to go up, demand's going to go up. How are you going to kind of handle the next phase? You know, that's a great question. In fact, yesterday I got asked, where are you with respect to 5G? And I tell them, if there is one operator compared to any other operator that we are aware of, that is 5G ready, that is Reliance, Geo. Why is that? Because we are the only all IP, all VoLT network out there. And I believe that is a critical fundamental building block to 5G. Why is that? Unlike in previous technologies, where 2G, 3G, and 4G was a forklift upgrade, in the case of 5G, it's coexistence because when you pick up your phone, you're going to see both 4G and 5G on the device. So one has to be leading in 4G to have the leadership in 5G. And we look at our network in a couple of building blocks. That is one key building block, like I said, is the all IP Volte network. The second building block, I believe, is deep fiber that we are continuing to leverage because we believe fiber is a critical component for successful 5G. Third is, I would say, automation as well as what I call as intelligent programmability. Fourth is HetNet. And I know there are different perspectives of what HetNet is. For us, HetNet is macro, micro, small cells, Wi-Fi, as well as FTTX. And this is what I think makes us ready for the continuous growth because we look at our network as a platform and we call our network XG ready, if I may use that term. Because for us, whether it is 5G or 6G, it is pluggable into our network. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting how the 5G is kind of integrating and overlaying on, on uh, LTE systems these days. Um, another question, one, one of the kind of big themes uh, for me as an analyst and uh, around uh, Mobile World Congress is this idea of sort of open networking uh, in general. I wonder if you could tell us a bit about how that plays in, in your strategy and perhaps specifically about Open RAN, which is, uh, again, one of the, the kind of topics that's blowing up a bit. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we are on the board of Open RAN and we are going to already, actually, we've started our disaggregation process already on our network. For us, disaggregation means the hardware software disaggregation as well as control plane disaggregation. And what ORAN brings to the table is so far you had a set of a vendor lock-in, if I may use that term. But with ORAN, what gives you the opportunity, when I talked about network as a platform, to have pluggable radio units and baseband units from different vendors. So that means I can technically, over a COTS hardware, have a radio interface as a network function or as a container as a function. In other words, what Open RAN enables is open interfaces and open uh, methodology, if I may use that term as well, because you have to, even though you have open interfaces, you need to have an open orchestration that is to manage all these interfaces. Bottom line is, Open RAN, we are accelerating the support as well as implementing on trial basis as we speak. Yeah, I guess what are the to get sort of quality in an open system, you're going to need the automation and, and all these kinds of tools. One of the hopes for, for ORAN and Open RAN generally is that there's a lot of innovative companies that have been kind of covered up by, I guess, the, this, the OEM system and haven't really had a chance to sort of flourish and, and come and compete. That's the hope. Are you seeing this sort of diversity of suppliers, these innovative suppliers with maybe not a full system, but maybe they've got a great radio, maybe they've got a great 
uh, baseband implementation. Maybe they've got a great antenna system. Are you, are you actually seeing that or is that still the, the hope? You know, that is such a fantastic question because I think when I think about Linux, which was the best open source platform, Linux became successful because someone like Red Hat was actually able to harden it and deliver a deployable product as well as a supportable open source platform. Hence, Linux became scalable. For telecom transformation leveraging hardened open source platforms, it's important for someone to take those open source elements and that open interfaces, harden it so that it can be deployable as well as it is supported. When we think about the Radisys acquisition, we look at Radisys to be that Red Hat equivalent in the telco transformation in taking open source and creating blueprints and reference designs that are hardened and deployable that either an ODM can have a plug and play module or an operator can have a plug and play module. So we look at Radisys to be the red hat for telco transformation in an open platform environment. So everyone's talking about Edge, um, pretty interesting technology. I was curious to how you think about that and I guess specifically uh, where you think the right uh, layer is in, you know, in your network, in your market. Is it, are we talking sell side? Are we talking city level? Are we talking you know, regional level? What, what actually is Edge uh, it, for you? For us, first of all, when we think about Edge, we look at it as an in distributed intelligent Edge. The idea is, even when we, when we think about intelligence at the Edge, we think about intelligence and privacy and trust for the people privacy and trust for the machines, privacy and trust for the uh, sensors. Why is that? Because when it, everything is getting connected and everyone is getting connected, there is a lot of bandwidth and there is a lot of real-time processing and need for low latency. So when you have to meet these criteria, we want to push it as to the edge as possible. So as far as we are concerned in India, we think it can go up to the edge of the cell where the distributed intelligence can indeed happen. Okay, but that's a pretty ambitious uh, way to look at it. I can't let you go without the other biggest buzzword in technology in general and even in networking now is uh, machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. Just give us, if you would, a, a quick uh, summation of top to bottom of, of, of how you're looking at that. We look at AI and ML as a platform not necessarily as a technology per se, because that platform, we leverage it in multiple layers, and that layers will be our operational layer, our customer care layer, our recommendations and offers layer. So that platform, we have already using it in our converged operations, mm -hmm. because we do not have an operations for fixed line, we do not have an operations for uh, internet or a mobile network, etc. We just have a converged operations because we are the only operator that we know of in India that can actually do fixed mobile convergence. Mm -hmm. And to do that, there is a set of complexity. Yeah. And the way to manage the complexity in terms of delivering better network performance and better network utilization with enhanced customer experience is indeed then AI and ML as a platform. So our first application so far we have leveraged it for is for our converged operations. So we're talking about edge. I guess the, the, the thing uh, I'd like to try and understand a bit is how you think about you know, what goes where in this, in this new network. You know, one of the key criteria for determining in terms of whether it is at the cell side, whether it is at the aggregation side, or at the regional data center, et cetera, also depends on the type of workloads. Because the type of workloads in terms of real-time processing, low latency, type of bandwidth, all of that determines where the right location for an intelligent edge computer is. One assumes you could translate that then into, say, from consumer to enterprise in, in, in all those levels. Indeed, indeed. I mean, that's why, like we discussed earlier, today we are focusing on consumers because that's the mobile space that we've entered. In the next few weeks or in the next immediate term, you should see us get into enterprise as well as the home, and we would leverage this platform capability across the various segments. Okay. Matthew, thanks very much. Thank you very much, it's always a pleasure.